want you to praise God. But God is worthy of all praise. And saints, I'm asking that you would tune in this morning to the book of Jonah. The book of Jonah, and you will find these recorded words in chapter 2 of the book of Jonah. And uh, I will begin at verse number 7 of the book of Jonah. Chapter 2, when you have it, say amen. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple, that they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed salvation is of the Lord. Let the church say amen. amen. Now turn with me to the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation. And you'll find these recorded words in chapter 2 of the book of Revelation. And follow along with me. I begin in verse number four of the book of Revelation chapter two. When you have it, say amen. amen. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. In verse 7, saints, read that, please. Thank you, Jesus. And at the church say amen. amen. Hallelujah. The Spirit is speaking to the church this morning in regards to his word today. It's time to renew your vows with God. It's time to renew your vows with God. The Lord, uh, as he began to speak to my soul in regards uh, to this passage of scripture, he wants the church to know that when we entered into a relationship with him, we made a vow to God. Now we may not have verbalized that vow in that manner, but when we cried out unto the Lord and said, Lord, save me. Lord, deliver me. And God did that by in filling you with the Holy Ghost and by establishing a new relationship with God, you entered into a vow. And a vow is a voluntary promise to God. And we must know that the vow is not a vow that we can just commit and then break. 
but it is a lifelong vow until death, hallelujah, separates. And we must understand that not necessarily physical death, but spiritual death can separate us from God. Sin is what separates us from God. And God, he used many analogies in the scriptures in, as an illustration to comparing his relationship with the church. And one of the analogies that God used is the relationship between a husband and a wife. For it is God that performed the first marriage in the Garden of Eden, and he will perform the last marriage in heaven. And God said in regards to marriage that what God has joined together, let no man Put asunder. And in other words, God is saying that the vow, the marriage vow that we take in regards to our relationship with God must not be taken lightly. It must not just be thrown aside when things are not going your way. And many times you hear marriage vows say for richer or for poor, in sickness and in health. And many times when things are not going the way they were maybe going in the beginning of the marriage, people look to take the easy way out. And this is why divorce is on the rise. But yet, saints, there is no divorcing God. For the vow that we make with him, God wants us to fulfill that vow until the end. And we don't know when the end is. For God, he has an appointed time for all things. But the Lord is letting us know as long as you fulfill your part of the vow, I'm going to be faithful to my part. And the conditions of the vow that we make with God are written in his word. Yet we must make sure our commitment to the vow that we make with God is not conditional. In regards to, amen, Lord, I will commit to you as long as it's easy. Well, the scriptures tell us that, amen, when you serve God, you have enemies that are fighting against you. You have an enemy, which is the world. You have an enemy, which is Satan. And you have an enemy, which is this flesh. And all three of those things don't make it easy for you to commit yourself or stay committed to God, to be faithful to God or remain faithful to God. All those three things are working contrary and trying to force you to break the vow that you have committed with God. And the Lord, he's letting us know if God is for you, he's more, he's more than anything that may come against you. And, and so the Lord is admonishing the, the saint of God that regardless of what may come against you, 
Stay committed to me. Stay faithful to me. And the Lord, he is admonishing the saints that the vow that we made with him, when we renew our vows, because many traditionally uh, who are married, they, they have a ceremony to renew their wedding vows. And renewing one's wedding vows is not establishing a new vow or a new relationship, but basically it's re reaffirming uh, their commitment to one another. And what God is teaching us by his word that we don't want to lose that same commitment that we once had when we started with the Lord. And as God began to speak to this church here at Ephesus, he noticed that he knew their works and their labor, but yet something was lacking. And their heart was not where God wanted it to be. See, our service and our Actions is no substitute for a submissive and obedient heart. The things that we do for God is, does not substitute the time that we spend with God. And we must not get so busy and caught up with things in our lives that we begin to neglect the most important thing. God, he can be taken for granted. And it is comparable uh, to a, as they call it, a, a honeymoon love. When one is first married and even as my wife, we were engaged for a short period of time. And during the engagement period, everything is new, exciting candy, the flowers, hallelujah, amen, they were coming frequently, but after a while, they don't come as frequent as they used to, <laughs> but yet, when one is in a relationship, candy and flowers are all and well good, but it does not replace spending time. Spending time, hallelujah, with that spouse, with that husband or that wife. And so God, he's the same way. He said, don't just bring me flowers. Don't just bring me candy. I, I want to be able to spend some time with you. Oh, the, you used to make time for me in prayer. You, you used to make time for me in Bible study, in Sunday school. But yet, something has happened along the way. And this is what God is saying. God wants our commitment to him to be renewed and rekindled. That we might have that same fire, that same desire that we used to have when we first, hallelujah, came into a right relationship with God. Oh, he's a good God, saints. Well, God, he took notice of this church. For in verse 2, he knew their works. He knew their labor. And he said, I know thy patience. And he, this church had a standard by which they would not compromise for no one or nothing else. And we, as a family of God, saints of God, we must know that God's standard is holiness. And we must not compromise the standard of God for anyone, but lift up and be an example, be a witness for God, be a light, an example of his word. Well, 
the Lord, he was acknowledging that, yes, I appreciate your works and your labor, but yet there is something lacking. There's something far more important than works. And God let them know that you left your first love. Now God, he will never leave us or forsake us, but yet God can, we can leave God. We cannot commit ourselves to God like we used to. We can serve God conditionally. Things come up and they become more important than God. And God, he, he spoke a parable when he asked men and women to follow him. And, and many made excuses. First, let me go tend to some land, or first let me uh, bid farewell to my family. And God is letting us know, I'm not taking second. Hallelujah. If you're going to commit to me by the vow of this word, I must be first. And he deserves to be first. Because without him, we wouldn't be here today. And we have to learn to put things in their proper perspective because God, he's the creator and the provider of all things. And we must not allow these things to interfere with the greatest thing, the one thing, the most important thing, and that's Jesus. He's a good God, saints. Well, Jesus let them know that something was missing, but he gave them a remedy. He let them know that it was time to renew yourself. Yes, you've left your first love, but you can be restored. You need to first remember. In verse 5, it says, remember from whence thou art fallen. And we, if you could take your mind back and just remember the day when the joy of the Lord first came into your soul. When you were filled with the Holy Ghost. That's a day you should never forget. And that's a day whereby it brought rejoicing. It brought an excitement. It was something brand new that you never experienced before. And God wants us to continue to maintain that same joy, that same excitement. I'm still excited about Jesus. After all that I've been through, the ups and downs, yet I still have joy. Hey, as a matter of fact, amen, it's more, more now than it was when I first started. Because when God first introduced himself to us, it was as a savior. But now I know him as a healer. I know him as a friend. I know him as a comforter. I know him as a counselor. Oh, there are so many aspects of God that we have yet to know. However, we have to continue to seek God with that same fervency, that same excitement. Don't lose your excitement for spending time with God. Don't lose your desire. Amen. Amen. When it comes to spending time with Jesus. Well, the Lord wants you to remember that joy and make sure that you still have joy. And, and if the joy has, has fallen low because God knew, he saw their actions, but God knows the intent of the heart. And we cannot hide our desires from God. Hallelujah. But our desires will be an indication of our efforts, or our efforts will be an indication of our desires. We can say we desire all we want, but if we don't put forth an effort, then 
actions speak louder than the words. Well, the Lord said, I want you to remember and then repent. Amen. Repent means the change your mind. You have to realize and be honest with yourself. I'm not where God wants me to be. You need to think about that. I'm going to say that again. That not where you want to be. I'm not where God wants me to be. And you have to have a desire to be where God wants you to be. Well, and you can't say, well, Lord, I did this, this, and this. I can say to my wife, well, I, I bought candy. I got flowers. But yet, I have not spent time with my wife. And, and I can say the same thing to her. It goes both ways. Sometimes we think it's just to the wife. <laughs> we like candy too. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. There's something we may not like flowers, but we like tools. <laughs> oh, don't leave the men out. Glory to God. But yet, I hope you get my point. It's not just the gift. God just don't want the service, the works. He wants some time. Ooh, I thank God. I thank him for being able to spend time with God. Communing with God. Fellowshipping with God. That is what strengthens our commitment and our relationship with the Lord. So our minds have to be changed. What I'm doing is not good enough. What I'm doing right now is, is not acceptable to God and I have to change my way I have to improve if I desire to maintain fellowship with God God wouldn't bring it up if it's not a problem if it wasn't a problem and, and so he said repent and, and then he says do the first works so he said basically remember repent and repeat repeat reestablish that spiritual connection. Don't get so caught up in the many works that you neglect the first works. Because it was the first works that allowed you to enter into the family of God, into a relationship with God. But that relationship cannot be neglected. Hallelujah. We have to make sure we put some time, effort, and energy in maintaining Spiritual communion with the Lord. Oh, he's a good God, saints. And if we lose our love for God and then we lose the light that shines in our soul, the candlestick, the light of God is no longer bright. You used to be a witness for God. But now we are close to the world. We know more about the world than we do the word. We spend more time in worldly things than we do in the word. And that is putting your light out. And you're telling God, yes, I, I love you. I want to serve you. But conditionally. I, I want to be able to hold on to some things that I like. And, and I want to hold on to things that make this flesh feel good and God is letting us know you can't commit yourself to, to both wife or husband say no you can't commit to me and someone else hallelujah but yet we have to be fully committed unto the Lord well we can see that Jonah had a relationship with God he acknowledged that he was a Hebrew and he was God's servant, for God would not have sent a word to Jonah if he had not had a relationship with Jonah. Yet Jonah wanted to serve God conditionally. Right? Jonah wanted to serve God, but yet he wanted to do what he wanted to do. And, and when the word doesn't agree with our flesh, and it does not always agree with our flesh. We have to make sure that we just don't forsake God, but 
we have to know that we got to submit to God. Whether sometimes we like it or not. Because the vow that we have made, these are the conditions. And God does not force us. You must remember that you were amen, seeking the Lord. You were calling on God. You recognized you needed something from God and only God could provide that for you. So once again, sometimes we must remember, remember right, who it was that established this relationship. It was you that sought the Lord. You wanted to enter into this relationship. Now you can't put it on hold because you want to do what you want to do. Well, Jonah, he wanted to just, just resolve his commitment and vow to God and go in his own direction. And the Lord, he loves his children, but his child here was rebellious. And uh, we must know that we can be rebellious children. And if you say not me, well, then Lord help me. <laughs> because this flesh is rebellious. And we must know that we don't always get it right the first time. But thank God for a second chance. Thank, see, God, he is giving every one of us a second chance to renew your, and reestablish and recommit yourself to God. Say, it's not necessary that you're not committed, but we must make sure that our commitment measures up to the standard that pleases God and that puts us in a right relationship with God. And so you know the story of Jonah. Jonah, he wanted to go in his own direction and God, he raised up a storm. But here I want to show how God began to minister and to deal with Jonah because he basically wanted Jonah to recommit himself. Because God did not change, the vow did not change, but our approach and attitude changes. Hallelujah. The love that we have of God is not what it used to. And so this is where we have to, amen, be honest and look at ourselves and say, Lord, amen, am I pleasing you the way you deserve to be pleased? Am I praising you the way you deserve to be praised? Am I serving you the way you deserve to be served? Hallelujah. God just doesn't want us to give him what's left but amen he wants us to give him our best for it is he that put strength in our body it is he that put breath in our body Lord whatever I have it belongs to you he's a good God saints well verse 2 amen of chapter 2 says that Jonah cried by reason of his affliction unto the Lord. Now, it was good that Jonah prayed because when he was in a ship and in the storm, he had no desire to pray. And we pray every now and then, but do we pray like we used to pray? Are we faithful in prayer or do we let things interrupt us? Prayer must, you must establish a pattern of prayer in your life. And the devil wants to disrupt that pattern. He wants to disrupt your routine of prayer. And once he can disrupt your routine, he'll, you will find yourself doing less than more. See, when my prayer routine is disrupted, I pick right back up where I left off. And I don't let the enemy win. Oh, he's a good God, saints. And Jesus, he prioritized Prayer, and he purposed in himself that he was going to pray. And we must know that, yes, it was great that Jonah prayed, but he did not pray for affect. You know, he didn't pray for affection. He prayed for affliction. I want you to see the difference. Affection 
means praying out of love for God. Hallelujah. Out of, out of, when things are going well, oh Lord, you can find time to pray and commune with God. But sometimes people just pray when troubles break out. When problems, glory to God, Amen. That's when you see many desire to pray or they desire you to pray for them. And we must know that prayer is an everyday attitude toward God. Learn to pray when the sun is shining, when things are going well because you know the bottom's going to fall out one day. But yet, I'm in communion with my God. I'm in fellowship with my Jesus. And he just does not want us to be serious when things are going bad, but be serious about prayer when things are going well. Well, Jonah, his troubles got his attention and his troubles caused him to pray. When God has to chasten us to pray, it's for the wrong reasons. When he has to chasten us to, to serve God Right then we must know that it's a reason. And it's mainly because the heart. His, Jonah's heart was not right. That's why his service was not right. Well, he cried by reason of his afflictions, but God, he gave him, he was ministering to him. And chastening Saying it's never pleasant when God is correcting us. No one, this flesh doesn't like to be corrected. Yet we can respond to correction in several ways. We can despise it or we can become bitter. We can get discouraged and give up on God. Or God wants us to submit to it. Because if we resist it, we just prolong it. But God, he loves us and he's trying to work out the best in us. Yes, he had caused this storm to come so that it led Jonah to pray. But after Jonah got through this chastening, he wanted Jonah to establish prayer on his own. And God, he knows what, what's best for us. And so there are times where he has to get our attention and shake up and disrupt our routine to get our attention and let us know that I want you to renew your vow with me. I want you to revive your commitment with me. Rekindle that fire that you used to have. God's a good God, saints. Well, Jonah in verse 4 said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will do it. I will look again toward thy holy temple. In other words, he had his eyes in the holy temple, but he stopped looking. And here he's acknowledging, I got to look again. And this is where God wants us to, hallelujah, turn back to what we used to do and commit ourselves to the house of God like we used to. For this is where we receive our spiritual strength and spiritual nourishment. Hallelujah. We can spend a lot of time feeding this flesh, feeding this carnal mind, and it's having a negative impact on our spiritual well-being. We have to decrease the carnal activity and increase the spiritual. God, he, Jonah acknowledged this himself. Lord, I'm going to look again. Hallelujah. Amen. My, your desire must be to where you can dwell in the house of the Lord. That is the one thing that we must not forsake or neglect. Well, as he began to uh, explain his experience and the waters had come past him. Hallelujah. The weeds were wrapped about his head. He was in a, a, a hopeless and a helpless situation. And God was allowing him to experience 
what it is like the Ninevites in whom he were to preach to. They were hopeless and they were helpless without God. And sometimes God has to develop compassion in us. See, Jonah did not want to preach God's word to this people because he knew that God was able to help them. Yet, we must understand, saints, yes, God has saved you, but yet that doesn't make us better than anyone else. And make sure we continue to have compassion for those that are without. Because we used to be those individuals that were without and on the outside. I'm so glad God brought me in. And it is a privilege to know God according to his word, but yet it's a responsibility. And God was holding Jonah accountable for his vow that he had made unto the Lord. Well, Jonah, he went down deep. He was going down by his own actions, and God was yet bringing him down further. Uh, by uh, being in this great fish for three days and three nights, I'm sure it was an experience that no one could, would ever and could ever imagine. And there are times when we are going through our troubles, and it seems like they're getting worse before they're getting better. And we must know that God has a way of speaking to us. He spoke to us by his word, but when we ignore his word, he speaks by circumstances. He speaks by situations, and they're not going to be to our liking. He gave us a chance to, as he did Jonah, to receive and obey his commandment, but Jonah, he refused. I told you this flesh is rebellious, and we have to let the world examine me. Don't examine others, but Lord, examine me. Lord, that I might see where I can improve and get better, hallelujah, in my relationship and serving you. Well, Jonah, he got to the point where, in verse 7, he had fainted. My Lord, he was at his lowest point. Yet, here is where the remembrance came in. And he remembered the Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes our memory can serve to do us harm and our memory can serve to do us good. And it's important that we never forget who God is and what he has done for us. Never get beside ourselves and to thinking we are here because of our own abilities, because of our own, amen, resources. But yet, by the grace of God, it was the Lord that brought us up. It was the Lord that found us in a desperate state, a hopeless state and a helpless state. But his word got my attention one day, amen, and let me know that it's something better. There's a better joy than what you have already experienced. That is better than riches. That is better than silver and gold. That, hallelujah, because it's a joy. That, Amen. That makes you feel good. That when you don't have money in your pocket, that it's a joy. That that makes you happy. That when everything around you that is falling apart, that it's a joy. That that will encourage you. That and strengthen you uh, that to seek more of this joy. That because the more joy that you experience uh, that from God, the more joy you're gonna want. Uh, that uh, He's a good God. Uh, that He's worthy to be praised. Uh, that and Jesus uh, that He let Jonah know uh, that the vanity uh, that the thing 
things that, that I was trusting in, that, those things are vain. That, they can't give me joy that, like God can. That, sometimes we got to put the things that, that we have that, in perspective that, and know that, that without God, that, I am nothing. That without those things, that those things don't define me, that those things don't make me better. That but when Jesus that is in my soul, that I feel better, that I so much better, that because my burden of sin, that He cast it all away, that and here Jonah. That he began to change that his approach toward God that in verse 9 that instead of saying that I won't that in chapter 1 that he began to say I will that we have to change our that I won't that to I will that I will sacrifice that unto thee that I will will pay that that vow that that I have vowed that salvation that is of the Lord that Jonah came to himself that, and he realized that, that without God that, that he was nothing that I'd rather that, have Jesus that, than those vanity things that, that can't do that, what God can do for me that, stop seeking those things that, more than you do God that, stop worshiping those things that, worshiping a blessing that, more than the blesser that, because those things that, are going to pass away that, but yet Jesus said that, my word that, and he is that, the living word that, the written word that, and the spoken word that, it shall last forever that, and that word that, became flesh that, and dwelt among us that, and the word was nailed that, to the cross of Calvary that, and blood that, and water that, came streaming down that, from the word that, hallelujah that, the word that, is Jesus that, and when the word that, was put in the tomb that, for three days that, and three nights that, just like Jonah that was in the well, that, amen, for three days that, and three nights. But the third day, that, there was a resurrection. That, there was something new that, that God provided that, for all of mankind. That, he provided a way that, by which men can enter that, into a right relationship that, with God. That, there is no relationship that, with God that, except by the Holy Ghost. That, and he told his disciples that, to go up to Jerusalem that, and wait there that, till you be endured that, with power that, from on high. That, see the marriage, that, the relationship took place that, in the upper room that, when God that, he poured out that, his spirit that, upon those praising him that, and seeking him you remember the day that when God that first poured out that his joy that in your soul that you made a vow that and you said Lord that I'm going to serve you that because you saved me that and did something for me that, that no one else can do that but you didn't realize that the commitment that it took that to maintain this joy 
But yet, God will never forget about his vow. Don't you forget about the vow you make with Jesus. And Jonah wanted to forget all about the vow. His ways became more important than God's way. But yet God, he let Jonah know you can run, but you can't hide. I'm going to send a storm to reel you in. You don't want to pray in the ship. Well, I'm going to get you to the point where I'm going to bring you down to your knees. Saints, talk to Jesus willingly, not out of affliction or trouble. Because when trouble comes, you won't be able to get a prayer through like you used to. But when you seek God every day, it's no strange thing that when you call on him, you don't have to call him all day. It took Jonah three days to get to that point where he can get a breakthrough. But yet, when you're close to God, when you commune with God, while things are going well, hallelujah, you can call him one time. Jesus, Jesus, Hey, and you can feel something stirred up on the inside. Keep rekindling that fire, that spark in your soul. Keep calling Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, you have a way of ministering to my soul. When I need you the most, you're right there. Just call him by his name. Well, those around Jonah was praying and calling, but Jonah lost his love and his desire to pray. He was down sleeping. Some are spiritually asleep and unaware that the enemy has stolen their joy. Wake up and give God praise. This is a wake up word. God sent a word to wake you up. You've lost your love. That desire you used to have. It's time to renew your vow with God. Woo! I thank him. God won't force himself upon anyone. The vow we make is voluntary. Willingly. But I know that I love to spend time with Jesus. It's not a burden. It's a joy. It's a gladness. And when serving God becomes a burden, you have to check where your heart is. You've fallen away from your first love. Why? Because now it's just works. You're just going through the motions. But God, he said, rekindle. Do the first works. Oh, God, get back to the first words. Get back to when it was just you and Jesus. Hey, you calling on the Jesus. The whole body around is you and Jesus. Man, he neglect that time and don't appreciate it until it's gone. And they can't feel God like they used to. They don't have the joy like they used to. And You're going to need that joy. Hallelujah. When times are going that's not agreeable with your flesh. 
Don't just go through the motions. But you make sure you make a connection with God every time you walk through those doors. Because if you don't make a connection with God, you're just going to leave the same way you came. But God is trying to build you up. Hallelujah. In a spiritual way. We can build ourselves up naturally by spending time in front of the television. Spending time with carnal things, natural things. But yet, there's no substitute. Taking time out to spend with Jesus. And those around Jonah knew that he should be praying. They knew better than Jonah did. But Jonah had a rebellious heart. See, no one can tell you to do something that you don't want to do. No one can make you do something that you don't want to do. But this is why the spirit has to speak. The spirit spoke to that church at Ephesus to let them know, to bring to their enlightenment that there's something missing. Yes, I appreciate the works, but I don't want works at the expense of you neglecting your love for me, your communion with me, your fellowship with me. And so Jonah, he fell out of fellowship. Why? Because the Bible said he fleed from the presence of the Lord. Sin had separated Jonah. And the vow, yes, was broken. But yet Jonah had enough sense. Finally, he surrendered. And said, I'm going to pay my vow, Lord. Lord, I'm sorry. I I'm going to renew my vow. I'm going to keep my power to the bargain. And serve you. And God gave him a fervency. Three days journey, he made it in one day. When God brings you through something, it should show by the evidence. Woo! You don't have to tell anybody what you go through, chastening from God, but on the other side of the chase, it should be some evidence. Of serving God even more and better than before. And I thank God for his word just as it came to Jonah a second time. See, God, he now forgave Jonah and now Jonah was in a position to hear a word. He was able to receive the word and he submitted to the word. See, it's a process Make yourself available to hear the word, receive it, but you got to submit to it in order for it to benefit you in a spiritual way. And so Jonah, he changed his ways because he changed his mind. And he did that which pleased the Lord and not himself. And Jonah still had some work to be done if you know the whole book and hallelujah he still wasn't happy but he did it glory to God and sometimes we can do things just to get out of trouble <laughs> and then we fall right back into our same habits right and God wants us to fully surrender right change our ways so that we don't resort back to our old bad habits. Right? Amen. Once God puts you on the right path, keep on pressing. Keep on serving. Yes, there are going to be some bumps in the road, but that's all right. Jesus, smooth them out. Hallelujah. He will yet be with you during the bumpy times. Yet, hallelujah, he wants us to continue to seek him. Amen. When things are going well. I trust you get this word, saints, because renewing vows, it's a traditional thing of the world, and uh, yet we can see by the scriptures it's a spiritual thing when it comes to our commitment and our, hallelujah, dedication unto the Lord. We don't want God to get old to us. 
and take God for granted, but yet continue, continue to make ourselves available and serve him according to his condition and not our own condition. He's a good God. Precious Lord and Savior, Jesus.